Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. You'll have to forgive my voice as I'm fighting off a chest cold today. <laughs> Tell Scarlet I do give it him. <laughs> Pardon me. Today is a special review because we've not had a new model from Pen BBS since February 2022. The folks at Pen BBS in Shanghai have not been lazy. They've been enduring months and months of lockdowns because of China's zero tolerance COVID protocols. But Jialong Su and his small band of fountain pen geeks have been hard at work designing new models, new nibs, and new inks for all Pen BBS fanatics. That includes me. I was even expecting to never see the Pen BBS 2022 Year of the Tiger pen. However, they've hinted that we will see this long-awaited limited edition Year of the Tiger before too long. In fact, just today, Biney posted this photo as a tease of the nib. But right now, they've released this new model, Pen BBS 489, and the super cool thing about this is that Long has revived a 70-year-old filling system first developed by Schaefer in the early 1950s, as this 489 is a touchdown filler. Find out what a touchdown filler is and how it works in this gorgeous Pen BBS 489 in my favorite acrylic galaxy right now. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Which one? It's one of these. This one. This fountain pen. If you want to see the unboxing for this fountain pen, you can click on the link to see that video right here. And when we get to the touchdown filling mechanism of this pen, I'll do a brief aside about the history of Schaefer's touchdown filler. Of course, those of you who aren't history buffs can skip ahead. I promise I won't make fun of you in your absence. Yeah, right. <laughs> but let's do a beauty pass of this, my favorite acrylic, Galaxy. And I'll line up all my Galaxy finishes for you to see in these gorgeous blues. And if you're not a fan of the color blue, well, my goodness, you don't like blue and you don't like history. It sounds like you'd much rather prefer watching someone get barbecue sauce all over their fountain pen. So off with you. Get out. As you can see, I have a lot of Galaxy. All right here are Pen BBS, and I've got some extras over here. So the first one, this is the Pen BBS 489, the new one. And then we have my favorite of all of my Pen BBS pens, my 456 vacuum filler in Galaxy Blue. And then we have a 355 bulk filler, a 487 magnetic filler, a 480, and I have two 308s. This was my first in Galaxy. This is with gold trim. And look at that deep blue right there. All of these are different. And here is one that was gifted to me by a viewer. And this is another 308 in Galaxy, but this one has the chrome trim. And then we move the pen BBS aside and we take a look at these. This is my Leonardo Ferrore in Galaxy Blue. This isn't exactly the same uh, finish as the other galaxies we'll see, but it is incredible and I wanted to in include it here to show you um, How it is different, but it is amazing Beautiful beautiful fountain pen this one and then another non pen BBS Galaxy finish, but it's the same material galaxy. This is my moon man m800 again one of my favorites, but I cheat I put a Leonardo nib on it and then there's the Jinhao 100 centennial and this one is in galaxy and it is exactly the same material and we'll get to this little guy in a moment and when i opened this new 489 uh, the one question i wanted to answer for myself was will this new model 489 touchdown filler replace my favorite pen bbs pen my 456 galaxy vacuum filler as the best in my pen bbs collection i think i've answered that question after writing with this pen for about a week 
but I'll leave that for my likes and dislikes later. So let's look at the new Pen BBS 489 touchdown filler in Galaxy. Overall, the pen is a slightly shorter than all the other models of Pen BBS I have in Galaxy. In body shape, it most resembles a scaled down version of the 355 bulk filler. It has the flat end finials and is just slightly smaller in length and girth. From the top, there is a flat top finial that has a concave edge on it. The standard Pen BBS sword clip extends from the cap is very springy and very usable. The cap tapers up to a Pen BBS cap band that is reduced in size from both the 456 and the 355, and it has Pen BBS on one side and 489 Shanghai China on the other. The edge of the cap band has a concave slope on it down to the barrel which begins with another chrome ring which is actually the threads on the top of the barrel the barrel tapers very slightly all the way down the barrel is separated from the filler knob uh, by another chrome ring and there is a plain flat bottom the cap unscrews with one and about a half turns to reveal a new shape tapering section that ends in a flare towards the number six size pen bbs fine steel nib and black plastic feed and the metal cap threads here are not sharp and they are relatively unobtrusive if you squeeze your pen hard in your grip you will begin to feel them in longer writing sessions this is also a potential break point right here where the metal meets the acrylic so try not to drop your 489 as this weak point in the join between the metal and the acrylic will be where it breaks i broke my 456 in exactly this spot the section is very comfortable in the hand let's get a closer look at this nib it is the standard pen bbs number six size steel nib with the familiar engravings of pen bbs since 2005 a script f for fine and china along with the usual filigree border work the nib and the feet are part of an assembly that unscrews for easy maintenance or swapping. The section unscrews to reveal the touchdown filler system uh, comprised of a removal sack protector unit. Take that out just like that. And it has the sack inside. I've not been able to confirm whether the sack inside here is latex or PVC. And with the barrel removed, we can see the touchdown tube that slides in and out of that barrel to compress the sack and to fill the pen you unscrew the knob retract the touchdown tube place the nib in the ink and press down on the touchdown tube that compresses the ink sack inside the sack protector and expels any air or liquid or whatever you might have in it and you'll hear that slight hissing sound there it is again that's because there is a a small divot in the end of the touchdown tube right there when you get down to that point there that releases the compression you can see it being pushed back out because of the compressed air but once we get there it releases that air and the sack expands and sucks up ink and that's why it's important just to hold that nib down in the ink for a few seconds to allow that sack to expand and suck up as much ink as you can a second stroke is always a good idea to get a full fill and a quick stroke like that is better than a slow stroke because you get more compression on it so here's my brief aside about the history of this particular pen technology in the late 40s Schaefer was searching for a filling system that would make filling a fountain pen quick easy and with no mess and they came up with the pneumatic touchdown filler here is a Schaefer touchdown pen from the year they were introduced in 1949 this is a Schaefer Craftsman. I have yet to restore this pen and it's not in working order, but it illustrates some of the issues Schaefer had with the early touchdown design. There were two main problems with it. In order to fill the pen, you needed to immerse the entire section in the ink when you push the touchdown tube down to suck up ink because the feed filler hole is right there at near the section. In subsequent versions, Schaefer redesigned the feed so there was a filler hole at the top of the feed rather than the bottom and only the tip of the nib needed to be immersed in the ink to fill the pen these were called tip dip touchdown fillers the second issue with the early model was these sections have a ribbed texture to them and 
when you immersed that section in the ink it trapped a lot of ink on there so it was a fairly messy affair. Schaefer solved both of the problems by introducing the snorkel touchdown filler in 1952. And here is a 1952 Schaefer Valiant which is a touchdown snorkel. On this one by turning the touchdown filler knob it extends a tube out the front of the feed called a snorkel and you dipped that into the ink you didn't even have to touch the nib to the ink in order to fill this pen you withdraw the touchdown tube and then push it down to drop ink there's still a little bit of ink in this pen so that's why I put a Kleenex under it and then you withdraw the tube again by screwing the touchdown knob down and you don't have any ink to clean up after being phased out in the early 60s Schaefer returned to the touchdown filler with the Schaefer legacy in the mid 90s this pen allowed you to remove the touchdown unit and replace it with cartridges if you wished and I think it's that version of the touchdown that pen BBS has emulated here and welcome back history haters the inside of the cap shows a ledge milled into the acrylic that meets up with the section to seal the nib from evaporation the cap doesn't post as the acrylic threads of the cap run into that ring separating the barrel from the knob unposted the pen is nicely balanced and very comfortable in the hand the pen fills with about 0.7 milliliters of ink but by removing the touchdown unit you can insert a Lamy long cartridge and that works nicely or a Parker short unfortunately it won't take Parker longs and it won't accept two Parker shorts it also won't accept a pen BBS converter which is kind of ridiculous anyway I bought this pen at the easy buy Etsy shop for $42 US at the time I filmed this there are still pen BBS 489s available at the pen BBS official store on Etsy although the premium acrylics like this galaxy have been sold out now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the pen BBS 489 touchdown in galaxy with a pen BBS 456 vacuum filler a Leonardo Momento Zero Blue Hawaii a Jinhao 100 Centennial and a Wingsong 629 piston filler now let's look at them posted and here they are posted as I mentioned the 489 does not post the 456 posts securely it makes it a little bit long but it's still a very comfortable pen posted the Leonardo Momento Zero posts beautifully and is a beautiful well-balanced pen and the Jinhao 100 Centennial that cap goes on the end securely but it makes it a super long pen and the Wingsung 629 is a nice poster and a nice balanced pen this 629 actually has a 14 karat gold nib now let's look at them unposted and here they are unposted as you can see they're all relatively the same size when they're unposted and they're all nice writers and very comfortable in the hand and nicely balanced now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample So because I was demonstrating this pen empty I have to fill it up again with Konpeki so we're going to screw the touch down we're going to immerse the nib in the ink all the way down to the section push down and I hear bubbles I'm going to pull up again and then push down quickly and I hear that little bit of a hiss some bubbles and then I can extract the nib and now we're ready for the writing portion of the review this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the new model pen BBS 489 touchdown and it has a number six size steel fine nib and the ink today as you just saw is Hiroshizuku Konpeki 
This is the only ink I put in my Galaxy pens. I swear by it. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. And let's check the wetness. Now it comes out very, very wet. And it didn't come out of the box like this. Um, most pen BBS, in fact, all pen BBS nibs that I've experienced have come out of the box very dry. Uh, so this one, I gave it the seven strokes to inky happiness technique, which you can see right here. This is how the pen wrote right out of the box. It was very smooth, but very dry. You can see how dry it is there. But then I did the seven strokes by pressing down firmly seven times. Now that's created this amount of wetness and it might actually be overly wet. It's very, very smooth now. Uh, but I'm thinking that it's too wet. So what do you do when your nib is too wet after you've given it seven strokes? <laughs> Maybe five strokes was the magic number that time. But now that it's wetter than I want, how do I get it drier? Well, this technique that I'm going to show you isn't for the faint of heart. And like the seven strokes method, you use these techniques at your own risk. With the seven strokes, you risk bringing the nib to the point where it won't write. With this technique, you risk bending the tines completely out of whack, so you are forewarned. Don't try this if you don't want to screw up your nib. The upside is, uh, replacements are only 20 bucks. So this is what I do. I'll try to do this under the camera here. I will take my nails on either side of the nib, and I'm going to twist the nib. So I'm going to show my finger using my fingers. I'm going to try to do this with the tines. I'm going to move one up and push them together so that they're like scissors and hold it there for maybe 20 seconds or so and then bring it back and then I'm going to cross this one over that one and hold it there for about 20 seconds and then bring it back and then I have to use my loop to check to make sure that the tines are in alignment again if they aren't I'll realign them so let me see if I can give this a try over the camera Push them in, hold, I can fast forward here, and then try to go the other way, like that, and hold. And then check my wetness. It feels a little bit improved, but you can repeat that technique until you get the level of wetness that you like. Actually, this isn't too bad now. I was finding it was rather a gusher while I was writing with it after I did my seven strokes. And as to line variation, well, this is a very stiff nib. And so don't expect any line variation at all out of this nib. And the line this nib makes is 0 0.5 millimeters, which makes it a Western fine or a Japanese fine to medium. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. It's actually not too bad at all. Smooth, thin, dry. That's what she said. And some quick writing. Absolutely no issues at all, and that's very, very smooth. Very little feedback in this nib. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? 
First, I'm really pleased that PenBBS is continuing to design and develop different models and filling systems. Long seems to have a desire to recreate every filling system ever invented. In just the last few years, he's made a bulk filler, a vacuum filler, a magnetic filler, a vacuumatic, a piston filler, a spring filler, and experimented with hooded 14 karat gold nibs, calligraphy nibs, and even these spectacular hand engraved gold nibs. The only thing more spectacular than these gold nibs is their price. And in just the three years I've been collecting Pen BBS, I've seen new models in the 480, 355, 486, 487, 491, 348, 492, 499, 500, and 535. And they aren't done yet, as we can expect the 2022 Year of the Tiger Pen BBS Fountain Pen any time now. In fact, Biney just today teased us with the nib for the new Year of the Tiger pen. So, coming soon. Please let me know if you know of any other pen company that has this many new models, new filling systems, and variety of finishes, because other than Ranga, I think Pen BBS is the world leader in this. But I digress. This new 489 touchdown. My friend and colleague Chris Rapsayek of the YouTube channel Pen Talk wasn't all that excited about this touchdown filler. As a fountain pen collector and expert for many years, Chris has had plenty of experience with the touchdown, so this isn't new for him. Of course, it isn't new. It was invented in 1949, and we haven't seen it on a pen since the turn of the last century. But that's where I'm excited about this filling system. I think it's cool that pen nerds like Yi Long Su have geeked out about filling systems of the past and found ways to incorporate them into new models of fountain pens in 2022. Now there are advantages and disadvantages with this filling system. The advantages are that it's quick and easy to use. The disadvantages are that the ink sac unit might have a limited lifespan, although I've recently restored a 100 year old pen that still has the rubber sac in very good shape. So that's debatable. And it also depends on whether the sac is latex or rubber inside there. I might have to dissect it to find out. My guess is that it is latex because PVC isn't as thin or flexible and won't collapse under the pneumatic pressure as efficiently as latex. You could say another disadvantage is the ink capacity isn't great as a vac fill or a piston fill, but it's certainly better than the 0.22 milliliters of ink you'd get on a regular converter. Another disadvantage is even with a demonstrator model you can't see your ink levels. It might be an interesting upgrade for Pen BBS to try to make a clear sac protector so the demonstrator and the clear finish models will allow visible ink levels. And how does the Pen BBS 489 stack up against my favorite Pen BBS Galaxy 456 vacuum filler? I've had them head to head for a week and I have to say the 456 is still my favorite. The 456 posts, takes a good deal more ink and I like the section better on my 456. I might have to do a head to head comparison video between the 456 and the 489 using empirical data to determine which is best. But the 489 has endeared itself to me and has at least been elevated to number two on my list of pen BBS favorites. Some have said only fountain pen geeks and aficionados will appreciate this new model of pen BBS and they won't be around very long. I disagree with that. I think the ease of filling the large ink capacity relatively the excellent balance in the hand and the understated beauty of this pen for only $34 US will make it popular for some time. My Amber is a Cat 489 should arrive any day now and I purchased a number 15 calligraphy nib with it. So watch for another Pen BBS 489 video soon where I'll show off the Amber finish and the new calligraphy nib. Something to look forward to. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching and that's all she wrote.